When I get angry, I turn green. <laughs> I've been training for over 10 years. Uh, I've been doing mixed martial arts for six years. Started off with boxing, as any young kid would uh, would do when they grow up. They, you know, they obviously see the Muhammad Ali's and the, the Mike Tyson's, and um, so basically used to get fit and go to the gym and do self defense. And from there, I went on to uh, doing the Greco freestyle wrestling and uh, the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So I was one of those few individuals who's got genetics on his side incredibly big man, so obviously building of mass and strength isn't a, isn't a, a great priority, it's something that's already existing. Um, it's more just a case now of stimulating that, that, that size and that strength that's already there. The training that we do is, is primarily more based on like fast twitch movements or power type movements. I, I guess again that's a genetic thing because the amount of fast, fast twitch muscle fibres he has and being such a big guy you don't expect that explosiveness. I think a lot of fighters uh, are either really, really good on the ground and haven't got that good uh, stand-up skills or really, really good stand-up fighters and, you know, have got mediocre uh, ground skill. I think Sowa's strength is that he, he does have really good stand-up and he does have very good um, ground skills. I think he's a real uh, complete all-rounder and he can wrestle as well. And plus his size, um, he's very agile uh, for his size. So I think that, that's, um, that's one of his strengths. I consider myself as, uh, as a tough fighter. <laughs> I'll give 150% when I fight. I'm going to be very hard to beat. My full potential and uh, my full training, the, the full, you know, if I'm training and, and my head's right and, and uh, my conditioning's right, I'm going to be very hard to beat because I'm pretty fast for a big, for a big guy. Make the most of so on. Ten seconds, that's all we ask, man. All the guys in, 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 in Perth, all my team in Perth, and uh, the stand-up guys, the guy that does the stand-up, Steve, and, Mark Kennedy and Clay and John and them guys are, you know, I mean, they've, they've been getting my back and they've been pushing me every day to train and stuff like that, just to keep it, keep it, keep on it. My manager actually uh, gave me a call one day and said, look, you, you want to go up to uh, Team Quest? I, I uh, immediately uh, jumped, at the, jumped at the opportunity of of going and just knowing to be training with the best they're a stable of, uh, of uh, elite professional fighters. They've got like, some really good guys there, Sokaju, Dan, um, Mayhem, uh, just to name a, uh, a few. Um, plus they've got an a IFL team as well. I arrived in LA at, uh, at uh, 7 a.m. and I thought to myself, should I hop back on the plane? Uh, but, uh, but Heath, uh, he Sims picked me up from the airport, so I couldn't really run away because <laughs> he was there waiting for me. So, um, and then we drove all the way to Temecula. I thought, oh, here we go. <laughs> when I was training over there, it was like going to war every day, and it was like a wake-up call. Um, it was like on the wall because every time you hit that mat, you know someone's going to kick your ass. I'm not saying that uh, what I was doing before was wrong, but it's kind of like it's more competitive. They've got a lot more guys there to spar, a lot more heavier guys there to spar. Um, and just when you think that uh, uh, you're done, I mean, you've got another two rounds. So, I mean, they really push you to the limit and beyond that. I guess when you're fighting, when you've had enough, you've had enough. But if they keep on pushing you through that barrier, you're breaking that barrier every single time. Uh, you know, I guess when, when you're fighting, you just, you know, it's, you get to that stage where you can't, get, you can't go anymore, or you get where you're just mentally fatigued. Um, and these guys at Team Quest, they're just, Ryan's just in your head. No, gotta get up, no get up, get up, get up. It's a big, um, it's a big thing to actually have these guys pushing you and stuff, so. They kind of like broke me before I improved, so which is good. And uh, so I kind of like started from scratch, even though I knew a few things, but I kind of like started from scratch and 
and yeah, it feels good now that I'm, I'm actually uh, at, my, at my peak condition. The thing with solar in Australia, as far as I see, and, and, and especially here in Perth, is he has no peers. He's the top of the food chain, and that's a very dangerous position for any athlete to be. Obviously, he had a great record here in Australia. He had great reputation here in Australia. <laughs> And yeah, he, he trained reasonably well here in Australia, but it was when he went off to Team Quest that he appreciated what the, the, what the world's best do. Obviously the world's best in a, in a bloke like Dan Henderson and the guys around him. Um, he saw what they do and how they do it, and he then appreciated and respected exactly what he needs to be doing to achieve the same results. So the sower that came back here was a highly motivated sower, a disciplined sower, um, uh, that eventually changed his whole attitude towards the whole game. <laughs> If you can maintain the rage, maintain the intensity for the next couple of years, um, develop your skills and train with you know, world-class athletes like the guys at Team Quest, well, uh, you know, sky's the limit for a guy like that, you know, with the right direction. He's one of these individuals that's very passionate about what he does. You know, the scary thing is with individuals with talent is a lot of times they never use that talent and, and take it to greater heights. Um, he's got that talent, but at the same time he's very driven and he wants to do the best he can for himself and for his family. Being away from my kids kind of like take it, takes its toll. Um, the fact that uh, I am thousands and thousands and thousands of miles away from them, uh, you know, in another country, um, and I mean, I, I get to talk to them every day, so which is which is good. Um, but in a way of, of you know, I, I'm, I'm by myself. He's a loving dad, loving husband. I I've known Sol for well over ten years now. Um, I've seen Sol go through the highs. I've seen him go through the lows. I've seen him. Um, working a nine to five type job and I've seen him as a professional athlete and uh, yeah, he loves his family, loves his kids, loves his wife and, uh, and, and there's desires there. Team Quest is like, kind of like a family, everyone's there to back each other and, and, and if you're down, you know, if one of the fighters will, will, you know, will pull you up and if you, you know, that's the good thing about it. So, I mean, I'd love to meet my family to be there but um, we'll see what happens. When I get a big fat paycheck, maybe they can come. We can break here on 6PR that so are the Holt Palali from Perth, who is part of Team Quest, uh, will be fighting at UFC 79. I signed a three fight deal with UFC, which is good news. Um, now I've got to do, put all the hard work in and uh, do all the hard training. My first fight uh, in UFC is on the 29th of December at Mandalay Bay. Las Vegas. So Perth is my hometown, so it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful state in Australia. So uh, we'll see what happens in the UFC, but uh, you know, I'd love to bring back a belt. I think it'd be awesome, and I think it'd just be awesome for Australia one and Perth two that he, he gets there and, and holds that UFC belt around his waist. I want a title, and UFC title is one I want. If he stays focused. And, and he really wants it, and he keeps his, his, his eye on the goal, he'll get whatever he wants. I mean, I don't see anyone being out there that can really stop him if he's focused and working hard and training where he needs to be. He's just too big, too strong, too quick, and all he needs is that inner drive, and then uh, I think he can get to wherever he wants. Um, and that's no disrespect to any of the guys that are in the business at the moment, I just perceive him as being the total package. And if he, if he stays focused, the sky's the limit. There's a lot of good fighters out there, a lot of heavyweights, and, uh, I mean, all for all for good luck to them, and uh, and I hope them all the best. But I'm coming. I'm gonna make some big waves, and they better knock me out out cold, or bring a bat, or a knife, or one of their cornermen could throw a flick knife over the fence or something over the cage, and they can stab me because that's the only way they're gonna get me.